I, I was very clueless when I first started the show in terms of um, I- exactly where Kate was in this whole picture. Um, I, I didn't realize, obviously, that Ashley was no longer going to be a part of Sanctuary. I thought her character was going to come back, and so I never really questioned that. And a lot of people talk about how Kate replaced Ashley, but I never, I never knew that. I never realized, and nobody ever... I don't think the rest of the cast ever um, felt that way either. It was just that this is a new character that's coming on board, and um, she has her own arc and her own um, elements that she's bringing to to the show. Um, so it wasn't really until the show aired that I understood what the fans felt, and um, and I realized, oh, okay, people feel like Kate re- has replaced Ashley. Kate's a flawed character, you know. She's. Uh, I mean, when she first started out, we weren't sure if she was good or if she was bad or where her loyalties lied. Um, but she, you know, she's 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 been kind of an orphan most of her life and had to um, defend herself and make do with whatever she had. Um, and then through her arc and through getting to know everyone at the sanctuary, that's where she's really learned. Um, the value of family, and um, because of that, she's she's just become a lot more real, and she hasn't had to put those boundaries up and those walls up that she's had most of her life. I think it's always interesting to get that feedback mm-hmm. and to realize what is coming through and what people are picking, what qualities people are picking up on or want more of, but as Agam said, that kind of influence really it goes through the writers first because Mm -hmm. you get the script and you see oh they've responded to this and they brought this out and there's more of this side of Tesla in this episode and and ultimately it's then your job to interpret that. Because I play Nikola Tesla who I've played before on stage for in a in a a piece of theater that's traveled around quite a bit came to Edinburgh in fact for a month and my friend Chris Heyerdahl who I met at a party said you know, I'm working on this thing and uh, they've written Nikola Tesla into it and you should maybe, you know, come read for it. And I, and I thought he was talking about some small indie theater thing. And I'd been very busy and I, and I said to him, no, I, I just can't. And I didn't, re- I thought, Tesla, whatever, I, can't. I couldn't quite get it. But then I got a call from my agent saying, you have an audition and the part was Nikola Tesla and I kind of pieced it together. And so I went in and did Tesla as I've played him on stage, which is a much more historically accurate portrayal of this Serbian inventor. Mm. And they quickly went, oh, no, 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 it's not really like that. He's more just a, you know, a guy who's a vampire. He gradually stripped away all that I knew about Tesla to become. Only difficult the first day or two. Right. Until I realized, oh, this is, an, uh, this is a different person. Right. Yeah, this is a vampire. <laughs> and, 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 yeah, and... Um, and the, the things that remain, of course, are his reliance upon his intelligence above anything else and his feelings of superiority. That, so those are the things that remain, and if anything in this show are more fun because they've taken it to the extreme, and it's new every time as opposed to in the theater, it's the same um, game that gets played, but here it's new every time and how um, those qualities get play themselves out. And, 